Hello, creatures of the night, and welcome to Twisted Salem, the only podcast dedicated to grisly murders, unsolved crimes, and paranormal phenomena in which city, USA. My name is Tyler Aldine, an unformed mass of human flesh, eager to be molded by the terrifying woman before me. And I'm Marina Bishop, local skeptic and debunker of pretty much everything Tyler believes. The The moon moon is is full, full. the The bodies bodies are piling up. up. This This is is Twisted Twisted Salem. Salem. Well, it has been one hell of a week. Yes, it has. Salem is quiet. We're just a few weeks past Yule. Christmas to the rest of the world. And I, for one, am still very much feeling the spirit of the day. I mean, it's my favorite holiday, as you know. You've mentioned. And this year, my family went to Portsmouth. Ah, Christmas Town. How very commercial of you. After the hell that was 2020, honestly, I am ready to be as commercial as my accumulated wealth will allow. And how was your holiday, Marina? Ah, the usual. Did some writing for the old murder blog. FaceTime with family members in New York, each of whom I deeply despise. Watched Grinch renditions. There are a surprising number of those. Dr. Seuss would be thrilled, I'm sure. Well, Essex hounds, it's Friday, and we have a whole undulating, slippery mess of murder and oddities to get to. But as usual, we begin with you. Starting in a hot second, our spiffy internet phone line will go live. Spiffy? Well, I also said internet phone line, so if you're gonna insult me, please do keep up. We'll be taking calls from you. Any and all topics are fair game, but the bloodier you bring it, the juicier we vomit it back onto you. So don't be afraid to get gory, you filthy lot of heathens. Is it getting hot in here, or is it just my corporeal form disintegrating into its constituent parts? God, you know how to get a girl going. Questions. Answers. What is reality? Okie dokie. Accepting calls in three, two, one. Hello, caller. What did you get wasted on this holiday season? Hello? Can you, can you hear me? Sure can. What's your name? Charlie. Hey, Charlie. And where Eggnog. are you? <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I thought you were asking about what you were. I don't drink it. What a hilarious and entertaining misunderstanding. Okay, Charlie from Eggnog, what you got for us? Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Did you guys hear about the fire in Lowell last week? Nope. Nada. Oh, hey, Tyler. Yeah, you're going to dig this, man. That sounds ominous. <laughs> oh, okay. So this guy comes home after work, right? And he walks in the front door and he calls out for his wife and two kids, but they don't answer. But that's not like a big surprise because when he pulled into the driveway, his wife's car wasn't there and the garage door was closed. I am assuming he wasn't expecting them to be gone. Nah, so he kicks back, grabs a beer, probably takes off his pants. Dude stuff, you know? Yeah, man. And he's sitting there in the living room, right? And he's watching Sports Center or Stocks or something. God, I love Stocks. Jesus Christ. Then he like smells this weird thing, right? So he starts to follow it and it goes into the garage. He opens the door and in the garage, the interior of his wife's SUV is totally engulfed in flames. And they're like, rah, start to come out and get into the garage. Um. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, so the dude literally bends over and just ah, throws up, right? Because the smell is just so intense. So he, like, wretches on the garage for and his wife and kids are roasting in the SUV, like, six feet away from this dude's face. Wow. Is there a coroner report or anything? I don't know, man, but they said it's definitely looking like a murder-suicide thing. That's pretty messed up. Yeah, man. I just keep thinking about that smell and, like, what it would be like to know you're breathing in your wife and kids. Well, I'm gonna be sick. Congratulations, Charlie. Usually it takes a good 20 minutes into a call before our little guy loses it. You, sir, get a black star. Hey, I want to give a shout out to Ray Ray and Cindy Tanners. What's up, Bobby and Trish and Brenda? Kill socks! Mm. Salt of the earth. Oh, sorry about that. You all right? Uh, uh, Charlie's still around? No. All right, well then, let's take another call. Hello, caller, what's your name and how many fingers am I holding up? Lydia, and 
just the middle one. <laughs> Correct. How you doing today, Lydia? Oh, fine. Trudging through the meaninglessness of existence. Amen, sister. I saw a ghost. Oh, really? Where at? Charter Street Cemetery. Seemed like it was probably Giles Corey. He does haunt that spot. You know, they say he usually pretends some great calamity that's soon to befall Salem. I can't imagine things being any worse. Well, aren't you just a bright ray of sunshine? You got anything else for us, Lydia? No. You should know, though, that your show is moderately enjoyable. Uh, thank you? You're welcome. Goodbye, friends. Okay, that was weird. I liked her. <laughs> I'll bet you did. There is no news. There is only news. 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 There is no news. All right, you ghoulish Kate Bush lovers, we are moving on to the news from the week. And what have we got today, Marina? Well, I'm sure that fire in Lowell was big news. We've also got a handful of other reported ghost sightings around Salem, as usual. Corwin's Curiosity Shop downtown is holding a public seance on January... What is it again? A faculty dinner, basically. But they're honoring my achievements over the past few years. It's a pretty rare occasion, actually. And you want me to ask Tyler why exactly? I hate when you look at me like that. Like what? Like I'm supposed to know what you're thinking. You don't? Clearly not. I can't believe you're going to make me say it. Mother, I have zero idea what you're talking about. You and Tyler have been... Friends. Friends since you were in elementary school. Inseparable since your father left. He didn't leave. You've got the podcast with him. You spend most of your time together. Just seems like it's probably time for you and Ty to... You know. Get a timeshare? Jesus, Marina. You know what I'm saying. He's probably shy about stuff like this, you know? Maybe if you ask him, that would get things moving. First off, he's not shy. He's a social titmouse. That doesn't mean what you think it means. Don't correct me when I'm criticizing people. Second, he's a really good friend. But I don't know why everybody keeps thinking there's more to it than that. Why do you keep thinking there isn't? Because there isn't. I know you won't tell me the truth if I ask, so I'll just say it. I think you have feelings for him. God, you're infuriating And sometimes. these things don't last forever. One day, he'll get tired of waiting. This tone you've got is really not cool. I'm just saying sooner is better than later. Maybe even if it doesn't work out. And then if it does work out... Yes? Well, I've always liked Tyler, is all I'm saying. When is this dinner in your honor? Friday night. I'll think about it. Good. Dinner starts at 7. Get there at 6.30, okay? Okay. It's $12 for taxes. That's up 2% from 1940 to 1941. 
which leaves the rest for dark expenses. Oh! Oh, good lord! Oh, that's better. Okay, so, $17 to the fishery, $10 to the dock workers... Oh! Cochran, got those numbers done? Mr. Laurel needs them. <laughs> Finishing Jeff. You're supposed to be done by noon, weren't you? Kept breaking pencils. You ever have days like that? <clears throat> I'll check back in an hour. Oh, could you please shut the door? Oh, Marina. Hey. And here we go. 657. I'm so glad you could make it on time. The snark is noted. Tyler, lovely to see you, as always. I see you dressed for the occasion. Hey, Miss B. Swanky night. Thought the old black tie might be appropriate. It's not every day they break out the china, I suppose. I was just talking with Ashley. Oh, God. Not sure I can handle a part-time psychic, part-time associate history professor at the moment. Be nice. I like Ashley. Thank you, Tyler. Yes, Tyler. Thank you. Okie dokie, being quiet starting now. Cheers. Thanks. Be nice to Tyler, too. Come on. Marina! Sweetheart, how's dead folks treating you? Aren't you funny? Ashley was just telling me about her attempts to get her new book published. As usual, the university press is rejecting legitimate parapsychological research on the grounds that there's no quote-unquote evidence to support it. I suppose I'll have to go with one of the local rags yet again. What's this one about? The Lynn Lady. The murder, the ghost, the whole ordeal. Surely you've heard of the Lynn Lady. Of course. Ah, great. It's so rare I talk with someone who knows the story. So what are your theories? Theories? About who killed her? Oh, well, I'm not sure I have any, really. Wait, who is this person? The Lynn Lady. Don't you two have a crime podcast thingy? Mm Mm-hmm. Twisted Salem. And you've never heard of the Lynn Lady? Mm, I said I have. Well, how about I inform Tyler here and refresh your memory at the same time? Fine. In the early 1940s, there was a gruesome murder in the woods off a five-mile stretch of Danvers Road in Swampscott, just a few miles from here. It was never solved. Yes. The body was horribly mangled and violated. The girl's name was Frances Cochran from Lynn. She was only 19 at the time. The girl's mother went on the radio three days after her daughter disappeared, begging for anyone with information to call in. Somebody did. It was a young male. All he said was that the police would find a body in the woods beside the highway. So they went there, and within an hour, they found her. Any evidence? Not nearly enough to track anyone down. A few people saw her in town before the murder. She'd left the leather factory where she worked as a bookkeeper a few hours before. But that's all we know for sure. So what are your theories? Well, plenty of suspects have been floated since the crime. One singer even claimed, 50 years after the fact, mind you, that her father had done the killing of not just Frances Cochran, but untold scores of young women all across the country, including Elizabeth Short... The the Black Black Dahlia. Exactly. Very nice, Ty. Oh, quick. Someone get him a cookie. And you forgot the ghost stuff, Ashley? I was getting there. Almost immediately after the murder, people started reporting strange things in the area. It began as odd events and sensations. Eventually, sightings of a woman draped entirely in white, drifting along the roadside, began to circulate. People started connecting the ghost to Frances Cochran from Lynn, and the legend of the Lynn Lady was born. Wow, that is fascinating. So how do you cover it in the book? Well, I start with the crime and the evidence, obviously. Then I move forward with interviews from the time, a few phone calls with the children of people who remember it. Then, of course, I spoke with some folks who have seen the ghost of the Lynn Lady herself. And you think they're telling the truth? 
Why wouldn't they? I mean, it's Salem. Show me a believer in all this psychic witch ghost crap, and I'll show you a paying customer. Marina, is that what you think of people like me? Psychic mediums? Paranormal researchers? That we're all mindless targets for rampant consumerism? Marina, have you ever seriously entertained the possibility that other people might have insights that you don't? Okay, that's enough. Oh, they're starting. How do I look? Fine. Fine? You look great, Pat. Knock them dead. Give you more company, eh? <laughs> I'm not sure I want this kind of company past one life. Amen to that. Okay. Here we go. Thank you all for coming tonight. I'm completely blown away by your support and kindness. The years since I reached tenure have been the happiest, most productive of my life. I feel so grateful to have been fully accepted by the Salem State community and to have been allowed to contribute to the place my family has called home for many generations now. Salem hey, is a special place to be a historian. It's many uh, layers and mom's speech. on top of and she through each other in fascinating we came. ways. We chatted. I think we Salem's conquered. Historians, artists, okay, and tourists if you want, sure. Each agree yeah, nothing ever it's really a bit stuffy in here. Quiet town. Let's go. And so there is, wonderfully, always more to discover. Why are we doing this again, man? Because I want to. Yeah, it just seems dumb. Dumb? Yeah, dumb. Mason, back me up, man. Well, I mean, we could just go get it legally. That's no fun. Who smokes butt anymore? I like it more. Yeah, but like, it's more expensive and doesn't get you nearly as high. I said I like it more. It's my car and it's my money and I want to go get some bud. So why don't you both just stop? Look I will come for her. My heart will be full, my chest heaving with courage and affection. I will come and be one, only ever forward. It, uh, uh, geez, I'm uh, so sorry. Are, are, you, are you all right, miss? Yes, I'm okay. But you should really watch where you're going. I will. I'm, I'm so sorry. No, it's fine, really. All right. Well, enjoy your day, miss. Oh, say there. You forgot your little book. What? You dropped your book there? Let me get it. No! 
it's okay. I, I've got it. Jeez, what's so precious about that book? Nothing. I just... I write in it sometimes. Stories? It's more thoughts, ideas. Poems, I guess. Poems, huh? Well, why don't you just read me one of them poems, Ace? Uh, they're really not... Oh, come on. Uh, Humor a dame. <clears throat> one to care. One to ease. I will come for her. My heart will be full. My chest heaving with courage and affection. Jeez. You're some kind of dame, Dizzy, ain't you, mister? Say, what's your name? Al. You? Francis. Pleased to meet you. I do believe it's customary to shake a girl's hand when she offers. Oh, I, um, um... Yeah, yeah, sorry. And the award for the slowest handshake in 1941 goes to Al, the poet. <laughs> Be seeing you, brown eyes. The bluest of eyes, the fairest of hair, a voice like spring rain, a coarse... Autumn stare. I will come to her at night and steal away her dreams. I will find myself there, more a man than once I seemed. I love this park. There's like nothing in it and it's only half a block, but it just insists on existing anyway. <laughs> you okay? Ashley, something about her I just can't stand. I can see that. Can you believe she talked down to me like that? Like she's some kind of authority? And my mom just stood there. She didn't even say a word. They're co-workers. That's probably all it is. Still. It's always been work with Mom, even after Dad disappeared. Now, with everybody in there dumping praise all over her, it's only going to get worse. Yeah. You still think about him a lot? I don't know. Probably hard not to. I, I can't imagine not knowing what happened. It's insane. One day he's going on a weekend fishing trip, and the next he's gone. And then it's like a year later and everybody's pretending that it's not the weirdest thing that's happened to any of us. And I'm supposed to just be functioning as if nothing ever happened. It's just too much. I just... I wish I could say something to help. You help, Tyler. You do. You're pretty good in there. What? Show me a believer in all this psychic witch ghost crap, and I'll show you a paying customer. <laughs> really? Oh, shut up. You had her. She looked like she had been run over by a truck, and then she got all high and mighty to recover. I, it was brilliant. Well, thank you. What? I don't want this to be about me. Come on, Ty. You can't let out a sigh like that and just leave it hanging. I just thought, I don't know, you don't normally ask me to go places like this, and we usually just hang out or do podcast stuff or whatever. So? So I, th I thought that maybe there was something, I don't know, different, maybe, about tonight. Different how? <sighs> Die. No, it's cool. I get it. We're, we're just... We're just sitting in a park alone, and my head got weird for a sec. I need to recalibrate a bit, you know? I'm glad you came. Do you want to go get a tarot reading? Uh, 
For real? We both lived here our entire lives, and how many times have you actually got your tarot read? <laughs> Let's do it! It's bound to be more fun than this supposed park. Well, do they read more than one person at a time? Oh, I think you have to be a couple. Oh. Well, I guess we could pretend to be one of those. <laughs> we could. We could make entire personalities, really. Can you do an Irish accent? Get your hands away from me, Irish Englishman. Yep, that was a terrible idea. Oh, that, you liked it. You have no idea what I like. <laughs> Come on, Ty. Pip, pip. Oh, Jesus Christ. Careful there, Professor. Too much champagne, I'm afraid. No such thing. There, right as rain. Thank you. You look beautiful tonight. Not here. Why not? Because everyone we're trying to keep this from is literally within ten feet of us. And behind a door. A big, oaken, sexy door. Jesus, you're wasted. That vocabulary's still on point, though. Always. Tell me this. If one can't float on a night like this with a woman like you, then what's the point of anything? Not a bad question. Maybe we should get a little distance between us and them, though. If you insist. Where to? Mansion shopping. Lovely. I take it Marina is still in the dark? She's not ready. Oh, this one's nice. I've never liked blue houses. Me neither, actually. Something very, I don't know, depressing about them. Even sky blue ones. We can do better. <laughs> oh, sorry. J just need a sec. It's all right. <sighs> Much better. I'm glad. Think another flare-up is coming? <sighs> Can't really tell yet. I, I can feel them a couple days out usually, so if something is happening, we've still got a bit. I don't know how you live with it. You can get used to anything. That's certainly true. Still, if there's anything I can do... There isn't, unfortunately. This is so magical, Ash. Being out here with all these old, beautiful mansions. Spending this night with you. I feel so full right now. Me too. I, I almost don't want to say this, but I... What? It doesn't feel great, you know? What? Marina. Ah. Uh. I'm trying to be patient, but it kind of makes me feel like a dirty secret. I don't like it. You're not a secret. It's just... After James disappeared, she barely made it through. That was a year ago. I know. It's more... <sighs> complicated, though. I... 
I just can't yet. Okay. You should know they adored each other. He was completely devoted to her, and she worshipped him. After he just up and vanished, she completely changed. I want to tell her about you. I do. But she still thinks he's alive somehow. She hasn't moved on at all. Maybe you should just do it anyway. Rip that band-aid right off and let the consequences be whatever they will be. You know, in tarot, the card that is the most associated with new beginnings is the fool. He dances on the edge of a cliff. Part of the symbolic interpretation is that change is an act of faith and grace, but that doesn't make it any less dangerous. Sometimes, though, you just have to jump off the damn cliff. I don't know how I could get her to understand. But at some point, she'll start to catch on, and that'll be worse. You know that, right? I know. I'll find a way before then. Do you think... I mean, it's okay if you don't want to, but... Do you think maybe you could kiss me? I know we just had a very heavy chat and all that, but this night, it's pretty important to me. And I'd really like it if... <gasps> Hello, stranger. Professor. You smell like marble rose and sage. Seems about right. Thank you for tonight, Ash. Thank you for everything. Of course. Now, there's a red house around the corner I want to show you. They've got these candles in the window that are to die for. Okay, let's do it. She came to me on the brightest day. Anything I would give to have her stay. The most beautiful flower, my summer rose. Don't yet let my... My sweetest... Well, hi there, Al. Uh, oh, hey, Joanna. What you writing? No, wait, but please don't. Beautiful flower? Summer rose? Who's this about? Me, I hope. No one. You got yourself a girlfriend? No. Well, if you ever do, don't show her this junk. She'll make fun of you for sure. That is, if she hasn't already for your dirty clothes and horrible stench. Hey, I know. Why don't you fetch this here book out of that there fountain and do the whole world a favor by cleaning up a little while you're at it? No! Why do you gotta be so mean to me all the time? Why shouldn't I be? You gonna stop me? Maybe I just don't like you much. Maybe I don't like you much either. Well, that don't matter. Why is that? Because my daddy's rich, and your daddy can barely feed you. You not liking me is like an ant not liking a linebacker. How's that for poetry, Al? <laughs> Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. oh, oh, 
Jesus Christ. Uh. Well? Uh. Oh. 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 Hold on, man. Hey, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to grab my phone, okay? Uh. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. Oh, what's wrong with my shoulder? It looks like there's a, a piece of metal in it. Jesus. I'm not. I'm that woman. What was she doing? I don't know what you're talking about, Drew. You're confused. Just let me go. She screamed. Oh, God. She's here. I, I can see her. I can see her in the woods. I, I think she I think she wants me to come. I do. I don't want to go, Mason. Please don't let me okay. go. Hey, 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 hey. She... There's nothing there, man. You're hurt pretty bad, okay? Just breathe. She's talking. Jesus, she's showing me. It's all on top of itself. Everything at once. Oh, oh my God. My dad, my fucking dad. I can't, I can't, he can't find out like that. I, where is it taking me? I can't, I can't do anything. It's, it's spinning. It's, Fuck, man. Fuck, I'm gonna be sick. Mason, Mason. I'm here, I don't, I don't know what this... I, I'm so sorry. I'm so... Hey. Hey. I know. Stay with me. Stay with me. Hey. Jude. Somebody, help me, please, somebody help me. I haven't been in this place since it changed ownership. Seems like these places are always changing ownership. Yeah. Nice, though. As such things go, sure. Hello, my young friends. Welcome to Corwin's Curiosity Shop. 
May I help you find anything tonight? We're here for a tarot reading, actually. Oh, how wonderful. The couple's rate is $100. Is that all right? That's a little steep, if it's, you ask. It's fine. Splendid. You can pay after. Please, follow me to the reading room. Please sit. Was there anything in particular that you were hoping to explore tonight? Some insights into your relationship, perhaps? Oh yes, Tyler, let us please do have insights into our relationship. Don't mind her, this isn't really her thing. But it was her idea, wasn't it? What? It was your idea to come here tonight. Uh, it was... How did you know that? I tend to know things. Part of the job, really. Please cut the deck, Mr... Oh, uh, Tyler. And this is Marina. Please cut, Tyler. And now you, Marina. Interesting. Marina, I sense a great deal of doubt and skepticism in you. Do you really? How about this? I will proceed without you needing to say a single word. Then, when I've concluded, you can make up your mind about if you found it valuable or not. Sound fair? What you mean is if I find it true or not. Oh, young lady. Whoever convinced you that the truth and value were at all linked did you a terrible disservice. And Tyler, I fear not speaking would be something of a torture for you. So feel free to pipe in whenever you like. <laughs> Will do. The first thing I'm seeing here is that there's no small amount of occlusion going on in this relationship. There are things unsaid that should be said. And what is said isn't nearly the full picture. This veil over the truer aspects of things has begun to feel comfortable for one or both of you. The next card tells me that the comfort needs to be eradicated entirely for you both to grow. Eradicated how? With Marina's precious truth, of course. You must tell each other the truth. Oh. This final card is somewhat of a challenge. The tower? Yes. It speaks of a moment of great calamity. A sudden breaking of the structure and order of things. A point past which there is no going back. It is generally a painful, devastating, unavoidable moment. Um, between us? Maybe. It's hard to say. Could it be in the past? Perhaps. You lost someone, didn't you? Not long ago, either. That's all right. I'll go no further. When you're ready, come back to me. The tower can speak to the past, but in this case, it seems to be pointed toward the future. Great trials await you both, for which you will need each other. But this hidden nature of things between you will need to be reconciled. Or what? Or whatever the truth is will be lost forever. And all you'll be left with is the veil. Is there anything you'd like to say to each other? Uh, um, now? Of course. Tyler? I, um... I think... Marina should go first. Quite. Marina, dear, you can say whatever you like here. I have been through many similar circumstances. You are protected in this space. I'd like to say... Yes, dear? I'd like to say that tarot is fucking stupid. How about we look at finances, shall we? 
I am so sorry. It's quite all right. Happens all the time. Leave your payment on the counter, please. Where there is no pain, where there is only sunshine, where all our worries have... Ought to burn that thing. <clears throat> Sir. That book of yours. Seems you spend more time caring for it than anything around your own home. So what you think, Al? Should I send that scratch paper on to hell? Please don't. How come I don't ever see you bringing girls around here? Is it me or you? Most girls don't like me much, I guess. What a surprise. Probably just as well. Women are all the same. Whore you up, take your change, spit you out. Nothing ever changes about women, boy. I met one today. Did you now? What's her name? Francis. Francis Cochran. Francis Cochran, eh? Pretty little thing. Yeah. She likes my writing. That's why you waste all that time scribbling? For girls? I like it. Mom used to write too? Your mother used to do a lot of things that got her into trouble. You'd be wise not to. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Chickens need straw. Get to it. Yes, sir. What? It's just... I've got some friends going to Marvin's tomorrow, and I was wondering if I could... If I could, too. I'm not gonna stop you. Do your chores first. Yes, sir. Uh, um... We're ha having sodas. I don't suppose you've got a mind to earn the nickel you want. I could help with Jim's Chrysler. You're still working on that, all right? You can't help with that. Need a man. Uh, but, uh, it is uh, some something else I I, I could uh, I could do. How about I give you a nickel for one of your poems? Make you a real writer. What? You heard me. One nickel. One poem. You flip through that book. I'll tell you when to stop. Fair trade. Um. Okay. Stop. Read it. It doesn't rhyme. What kind of poem? Don't rhyme. Plenty. Well, go ahead then, since you know so much. There's oil under my nails. My throat hurts something awful. I can't keep showing my face around here. Everyone's starting to talk about me. I wish just one person would say hello. Am I too different to have friends? that it? Y yes, sir. All right. Hand it here. Why'd you go throw my poem on the ground, Dad? Chickens lack paper. Here's your little book. And the nickel? Dresser. Chores before you leave in the morning, Shakespeare. Yes, sir. Which side? Uh, the driver's side. 
He was pinned, I think. He had a big piece of metal in his right shoulder. No one here now. What? No, he was... he was just here. It's only been 20 minutes. Could he have gotten out? I don't think so. Where would he have gone? Maybe into town. Oh, wait. Look there. The grass is bent. Looks like he went that way. What? Into the woods? That doesn't make any sense. All righty, the Sheriff. We'll get search parties put together. Don't worry. We'll find him before morning. For now, we need to get the other one out. What was his name again? Um, Will. Will Brock? Okay. It's gonna be all right, Mason. You did the right thing. Yeah, thanks. Just breathe okay. and stay calm. Yeah. We'll get through it together. <sighs> now, why don't you grab a blanket out of the back and go have a seat on the grass behind the ambulance? You don't want to see this part. Yeah, of course. All right, we're gonna need the saw. Jim, can you get the sheriff right on the way? Tell him to bring the canine unit. Come. This is a place that I like to be whenever I am here. I picture you and me eating, smiling in yellow light. My friends, your friends, laughing through the night. Oh, Francis. Sweet Francis, my heart's true desire. The dances and glances of long nights by our fire. Well, oh. what do you say, Al? Everything's a okay. Oh, you're looking a little glum, son. What you writing about? A uh, girl. Oh, I see. Already in that kind of trouble, eh? Not quite. Oh, but you'd like to be, I can tell. What's her name? Francis. Francis? Oh, Francis Cockles! <laughs> yes. Well, apologies for being excited, but I can see what you see, my friend. She's quite the looker. Yeah. Will she come around here often? Oh, sure, sure. Every Tuesday afternoon. Always gets burgers in a bag for her folks. Her pop likes them with an extra slice of cheese. Don't say. What time does she come around? If you don't mind me asking. Well, I'm not so sure I should be telling you that. Then you might not hang around here and spend all your dad's money now, would you? No, I suppose not. I do know that uh, she never misses that... W-E-S-X show all you kids are crazy about. Pop tops at four o'clock. I didn't say that. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Jenkins. Marvin, please. And for what? I didn't tell you nothing. Thanks anyway. So, what do I owe you? For one coat? Well, let's see. Um, say, is your dad still working on Jim's old black Chrysler? Yep. Needs another pair of hands. It's just that I'm not strong enough. I think Jim's coming back around next week. I ought to sell that hunk of. I'll tell you what. When you get young Mrs. Brown Curls to say yes to a date, you bring her on back to Marvin's one stop and we'll call it square. Deal? You mean it? Oh, sure. Anything for young love. Now you better attend to those sonnets, my boy. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. Sure, sure. I'll see you next time, Al. Bye, Mr. Jenkins. It's Marvin! January 12th, 2021. It's 11.45 p.m. 
I just got home. Horrible night. I asked Hai to come to Mom's banquet thing and couldn't stand being there for more than 20 minutes. We left and he wanted to talk about it. We decided to get a tarot reading instead, but I had to duck out of that too when the reader got all weird. God, this place is so dumb sometimes. Hey, Myrna. Down here. Just calling to say that you're the absolute worst daughter I can possibly imagine having ever existed at any time or place. Uh, you're inconsiderate, lazy, restless, think you're way smarter than you are, and no one likes the way you smile. God, um... Alright, listen. It's like 3.30 on Friday. I can't think of it anymore. How about you call me and leave me some? About to head out to the woods here, so... Won't be around the phone for a bit, but... I'm officially commanding you as your father... To insult me better than I've insulted you. Deal? Alright. I love you. Bye. I can't believe it's been a year, and I still have no idea what happened. Sometimes it makes sense to me, though. I get wanting to disappear. I don't think I could actually pull it off, but Dad definitely could. Still, you'd think I'd be able to hear it. I've listened to that voicemail 50 times trying to find some hint that he's about to leave. Nothing. Hi. Oh, Christ, you scared me. What are you doing here? Your mom drank too much. I, I was just bringing her home. It's like midnight. So? That dinner couldn't have gone past 9.30. We went out after. Out? Yes. Out. I'm glad I came across you, actually. There's something I wanted to talk with you about. Look, I'm sorry about the whole psychic witch comment. It's not that. Listen, I don't really know how to say this, so I'm just going to say it, okay? I've... I've been having dreams about you. Okay? I know how it sounds, but can you just for one minute pretend that I know what I'm talking about? <sighs> okay. Sure. A lot of people think psychics and mediums actually hear the voices of dead people. But I never have. I've always considered myself more of a clairvoyant. Meaning? Meaning, I just know things sometimes. Things there's no way for me to know. I just get stuff. It's, it's hard to explain. But a lot of times, I'll look back in hindsight and realize that the thing I came to know was actually rooted in a dream I'd had earlier. So you see the future in your dreams? Not exactly. I... I see seeds. The future is all trees. But I can never know which seeds are normal, boring dreams and which are on their way to growing into something. I think I understand. You do? Oh, good. So, whenever I start dreaming about something repeatedly, that's one of the signs I have that I'm dealing with something that might grow. And you've been dreaming about me? A lot. For weeks. 
I wanted to tell you at the dinner tonight, but then things got weird and you left and I lost the chance. What are the dreams like? I can barely remember them. I've tried writing them down immediately after I wake up, which usually works, but they slip away before I can get there. All I really remember is spinning. Everything's spinning and twisting, and you're there, and there's someone crying. It might be you, but I, I can't tell. And sometimes there's a man, sometimes there isn't. I'm sorry, I know this isn't very helpful, but I think you should be careful for the next few weeks. This many dreams, this quickly, usually means whatever it is is coming soon. Okay. Thank you. Don't mention it. Hey. What are you really doing here tonight? Good night, Marina. Good night. Miss Frances Cochran. The one and only. What do you say? Oh, everything's fine, just fine. Oh, I say, I saw your pops out yesterday buying a hammer. Lost his old one. Say, how does a man lose a hammer? Beats me. Got the old patty sack all good and packed? Sure do. Into the counter. Put it on the tab. Anything for you. You have a nice day now, Frances. Thanks, Marvin. Well, I'll be. Excuse me? I'll remember. We bumped into each other on the other side of the street a few days ago. Oh, yeah. The poet, right? Yep, that's me. A regular Chaucer. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, if you don't mind, I've got food to bring out to my parents. Best get going. Sure. Oh, say, Francis. Yeah? I haven't been able to stop thinking about you since we met the other day, so would you maybe want to go for a walk? Sometime. Oh, um, a walk? Sure. I don't have a car, but I can walk real good. Do it all the time. Go to the woods and back. There's a little spot out there where I've got some books and things stashed. It's a few miles. I, I walk all the time. Nate. Uh, oh. I'm sorry. I bothered you. I'm not... I, I don't really know what I'm doing. Why do you want to walk with me? Well, because you're pretty. And you talk to me. And I have fun when you talk. And I don't show my poems to many folks. And you seem to like them. Do you like them? Sure. That's really swell, Francis. That makes me really happy. Tell you what, how's about you and me go for that walk right now, Brown Eyes? You mean it? Sure. I only live about ten minutes from here. You can walk me home if you like. Oh, yes, please. Well, let's get shaking. These grill-seared cows in this here paper sack are going to start mooing again before long. <laughs> okay. So, I don't really know what to talk about. I don't think a pretty girl's ever really talked to me. <sighs> you talk about uh, normal things. Any old thing, really. My mom died. Oh? Yeah. 
couple years back, real weird. One night I came home and Dad said she'd just died. Um, mysterious like. He don't talk about it much. Sounds like he knows more than he lets on. I think so too. I want to ask him, but you know. What? Well, what if he killed her or something? There's nothing I could do about it anyway. Nobody's going to believe me over him. And then the minute the cops are gone, he would just beat me ragged or worse. I suppose that's true. He hit on you a lot. Mm, sure. For all kinds of things. Do you miss your mother much? Mm, well, she was all right, but she didn't talk a lot. Dad always say I, t I talk too much, and if I'm not careful, I'll end up just like her. But she hardly said anything at all. That's why I took to writing, I think. So I wouldn't talk too much to Dad. Mom used to write, too, sometimes. Poetry? I don't really know, really. Never read any of it. Do you ever write? Oh, tons. I'm a bookkeeper out at Lynn Letter Co. Jeez, oh, it sounds hard. I'm, I'm, I'm no good with numbers. Me either. But it keeps some change in my pocket, so I try to get better at it. Sure. Sure. Say, you're really easy to talk to. So are you, Al. Would you ever want to go get Cokes together? Are you asking me out on a date? I think so. To Marvin's? Uh, unless you got someplace else you'd rather go. No, no. Marvin's is fine. All right. I think it sounds well. You mean it? How's tomorrow? Let's make it Thursday. Six o'clock. That all right with you, Al? Sure. Well, this is me. That's a nice house. Our house isn't nearly that nice. Your parents rich? No. Then my dad must be poor. <laughs> I'll see you Thursday, brown eyes. See you, Francis. Steal away and run away into the night. Stay with me there. Breathe with me there. Dream with me there. Hold me until it's all over. Until nothing matters anymore. Until we can't feel a thing. And then we can finally be free. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to take her. I just wanted her to stay. I didn't mean to. True. True. Oh, man. Man. Okay. Keep breathing, okay? Twisting? Stop. Who... Who are you?
Hey. Hey. I'm not Listen, really I sure just... what... You go. I was just gonna say I'm not really sure what happened the other night, but if it's something I did, I'm sorry. No, no. No, I, I should have told you Tara was dumb or something. Like, that's how they make their money, right? They make you feel insecure about something so they can sell you answers. <laughs> you sound like me. Well, maybe you're right. Sometimes. It was a dumb idea, and I wasn't really in a good place. It wasn't you. Okay. You still want to do this today? Mr. Tyler Aldean, are you seriously suggesting we deprive over 30 fans of our award-ready show? When you put it like that, I sound like a right prick, don't I? You do. Well, shall we then? Let's... Hello, creatures of the night, and welcome to Twisted Salem, the only podcast dedicated to grisly murders, unsolved crimes, and paranormal phenomena in which city, USA. My name is Tyler Aldine, an unformed mass of human flesh, eager to be molded by the terrifying woman before me. And I'm Marina Bishop, local skeptic and debunker of pretty much everything Tyler believes. The The moon moon is full, full. the The bodies bodies are piling up. up. This This is is Twisted Twisted Salem. We have got some very gruesome news lined up for you today, but it is Monday, and you all know what that means. That's right, you maniacal hoodlums. You decrepit sociopaths. You fresh hell-dwelling seekers of mediocrity. Jesus, way below the belt. Oh, too close to home. Let's shake off the uh, icy bucket of water Marina just poured all over us by launching into you the fans' favorite segment. Normally, we hold court over this asylum of monstrosities with a half-hour Q&A. But every Monday, we open it up for a full hour to patrons only. That means if you want to hear the first hour of the show, you've got to fork over the dough. I have seriously eaten canned chili for the past three days straight. I could really use your help. I can tell. All right, you ravenous mall walkers, let's get this party started in three, two, one... Hello, caller, you're on the line. Hello, again. Oh, you just can't get enough of us, can you, Lydia? You're literally the only reason I'm alive. Depressing. All right, what's on your mind today, Lydia? I had tacos at that new taco place downtown. They serve tacos. Cool. All right, Lydia, you, you have a great day now. All righty. Another caller coming in three, two, one. One, hello, caller. Oh, hey. Prompt response. I dig it. What's your name and why does the caged bird sing? Uh, Mason, and uh, because it wants the hell out. Wait, are you Mason Mason? Like D&D at the treasure trove Mason? One and the same. Hey, man, it's been a bit. How's the kick still rocking the bard? What the hell is happening right now? Things are weird. Man, not gonna lie. What's going on? You guys heard about Will Brock and Drew Cathy, right? Oh, yeah. I came across that today while I was putting the show together. God, sad stuff. I didn't hear anything. What happened? Car accident. Both died. That's awful. Hey, well, actually, that, that's not true. I was in the car with them. Drew didn't die. I, I don't think so, anyway. Um, okay. Care to elaborate? Look, I told the cops this, but I don't think they believe me, so... I was in the car. I don't remember why we crashed. Will saw something, I think, but it had happened really fast. I think I blacked out after. When I came to, Will was already dead, but Drew was still hanging on. It seemed like he he was pinned in the driver's seat. He had had a big piece of metal sticking out of his shoulder, and, and he was losing it, man. Talking all kinds of weird shit. My My phone was crushed, so I went to go get help. When I came back... Drew was gone. I'm sorry, gone? Yeah, the responders tried to follow his footsteps, but couldn't for some reason. The cops brought in canines after my mom picked me up, but I haven't heard anything about them finding him. I'm just flipping through the article here. It says Drew is 
quote unquote presumed dead. What the hell does that mean? What was Drew saying that was so weird? Uh, yeah, something about a woman, I think, and something about twisting or, or spinning. Uh, no, twisting. That was the word. Twisting. What did you just say? Um, what is it? Nothing. Um, so, okay. He disappears, and then what? Then nothing. I've gone back to the site every day since, and there's no search parties or anything. I think maybe something weird is happening. Where was all this? The article just says Swampscott. Uh, Danvers Road. Wait, is that... Okay, Mason, well, thank you for calling in. If anyone has any information about the odd car accident or the whereabouts of Drew Cathy, please do reach out to us at twistedsalem666gmail.com. We're going to take a quick break, then we'll be right back with another caller. What's up? That's quite the coincidence. What? That road. That was the Lynn Lady Road, right? Yeah, I I was just about to talk about her on the show. Looked into the story a bit over the weekend. I'm not sure you should. Why not? I... Oh, shit. You know what we could do? We could go out there. Go out to where it happened and film on our phones. We could make it like a little mini-doc kind of thing. Put it up for patrons? Oh my god, they would flip. Tell me that's not a great idea. It's a great idea. Okay, you're right then. Let's let's not talk about it. We can roll out the whole story there. Maybe we'll catch a ghost on camera yeah. or a corpse. Yeah. Song's almost over. You good? Okay, sure. Let's do this. Welcome back, you festering corpse entrails. You unyieldy putricides. All right, we are jumping into caller numero three. Hello, caller. What's your name and which breakfast cereal mascot would you elect, President? Nestled in the woods. No one ever knows I'm here. Not my dad. Not my mom when she was around. I've never been bothered or hurt here. It's just for me. And maybe Francis one day. I really hope she's not going to make fun of me like all the other girls. No. She wouldn't do that. She's good. She'll love me and stay with me here forever. I'll show her all the poems I've buried under the dirt. My own private garden it never stops growing. I'll read her all the words I've written about her. There are 35 Francis poems in total now. We'll stay together for hours, dig up new pages, read them together, and laugh at how foolish I used to be, and fall asleep under the stars. It could be our special place, not just mine. I can't wait to see her again. Miss Frances Cochran. The love of my life. Okay, so it's 2 p.m. now. We definitely want to go at night, right? I think we kind of have to if we're filming it. All righty. Well, let me get home and get some of my dad's camping stuff together. Are we staying the night out there? 
no, no, just flashlights and stuff, and you can never be too prepared. Oh, right. Mom's got some of that stuff in her closet. I'll grab it. Cool. All right, meet at my place at six? Sounds good. I'm really excited we're doing this together. I can tell. See you in a bit. All right, later, Gator. Again, I, I can't hear you crying. How many times do I have to tell you? <laughs> but maybe if you would just talk to me, would you speak to me if I hadn't done what I did? I, I'm so sorry for that. I, I really am. I, I just, I didn't know what else to do. Is this where it happened? I, I think it could be. Things look a little different, though, but I'm not completely. What, what, was, what does that mean, do you think? <laughs> I've, I've been thinking about that place, the one between then and now, where everything is spinning and twisting. Did, did you go there, too? It felt like it could he hear me somehow, like I, if I chose to do something, it would let me, like there were rules, like did you, did you feel that too? Francis, oh, don't run off. <laughs> It's nice of him to walk me home. Still, you really ought to tell him. I know, I know. I want to. He's just so sweet. He's like a kid almost. I don't want to hurt him. Francis, if you don't lightly bump his heart now, you'll shatter it later. Unless you want to date him after you're gone. How could that possibly work? You could write to each other. Boston's not far. You'd probably see each other a few times a year. I don't think so. Well, then you've got to tell him. And if he wants to keep having cokes and maybe get a kiss or two out of the affair until you leave, so much the better. <laughs> Ooh, you're horrible. What? Get it while the getting's good, I say. Honestly, I think I just feel sorry for him. He talks like he's never had a real conversation. Here's what I want you to do. Every morning, between now and when you move to Boston, I want you to look into your bathroom mirror and say three words. Not. My. Problem. Oh, come on, Sally. I'm serious. Just because he's nice and you've got a soft spot for the verbally challenge doesn't mean you gotta date the guy. You're right. Oh, I know I'm right. <sighs> Guess that's it. Breaks just keep getting shorter, don't they? Sure do. Be seeing you, Sally. Have a good one, kid. Well, hello there. Hi. What the hell is this? Papers? 
Plaintiff certifies that no previous action for divorce, annulment, or affirmation of marriage, separate Marina, support. Sit down. What is this, Mom? Your father has been missing for a year. I think it's time we face the truth. He's gone, Marina. He's not dead. You don't just vanish for that long and then turn up perfectly fine. You do, if you're trying to get away from your wife. You think that your father would have disrespected me that much? To just leave? Maybe. Maybe he could sense that it would only take you a fucking year to divorce him so he got out while he could. And what would that say about his feelings toward you in this hypothetical scenario you've constructed? That he hated me more than he loved you? I don't know, Mom. Maybe you couldn't think of how to tell me, or maybe he did and I didn't realize. Listen, Marina. I know it feels somehow wrong to you. Like a betrayal, and I get that. But you can't keep lingering on this. You've got to move on. We all do. Divorcing him because you wish he was dead is not moving on. No, you're right. But that's not what's happening. Is this an insurance thing? Excuse me? Some sort of estate split or something? No. Then why? Because it's time. Why is it time? I've been sitting here thinking about it for the last hour, and I can't think of an answer to that question. So there must be something that I don't know. Why is it time? Did Ashley tell you that she and I had a little midnight chat on Friday? Please just listen I to me. I fucking knew it. I... It's... It's complicated. Jesus fucking Christ. I'm in love with her, okay? There. She was there for me in a really dark time, and now I'm in love with her. And I don't have clear answers for how that works, but there it is. I can't believe you. Well, I can't believe you either. Do you think your dad would have wanted you moping around the world waiting to feel better? No. He'd be mortified at how much you've withdrawn, especially at a time in your life when that's the last thing you should be doing. Oh, so I should just be okay? Like you? Yes, like me. It's hell. But you keep going. Marina, you've got family that supports you. Tyler worships you. We are just fucking friends. Fine. Then tell him that. Don't string him along refusing to talk about it. He's a good young man and you're treating him like he doesn't deserve you. How do you think that makes him feel? How do you think this shit makes me feel? How do you think Dad would feel? I think he'd want me to move on. To a fucking woman? It's not like I could have controlled it, Marina. These things just happen. So these papers, it's Ashley then? You're doing this so you can have a clean conscience I'm and not go- doing anything, Marina. It's done. Excuse me? Those are copies. It's already done. You divorced my missing father without asking me about it? Yes, it's time to move on, Marina. I... I don't know what to say to you. How could you? Marina, come here. No. Get the hell away from me. I don't want to be here anymore. I've got to... I've got to go somewhere. I can't... Marina, honey... No! I can't believe you did this. I... Where are you going? You can barely walk. I've gotta get out of walk. here. I've gotta go. Marina! I wanna be alone. I wanna be alone. Don't follow me. Here early. Oh, that's okay. Sure it is. 
I got you a coat. Swell, thanks. Say, why do you call me Brown Eyes? Well, your eyes are brown, aren't they? Sh sure, but everybody's eyes are brown, aren't they? Mine aren't. That's true. Say, uh, you want a burger, Blue Eyes? Oh, look at you go. And here I thought you didn't know how to talk to a dame. I don't. Well, you're sure good at pretending. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. How's the coke? Mm. Uh, fine. Do you like the woods? Like hunting and stuff? No, just being in the woods. Sure. We live in the woods. You don't say. There's no one around us for a few miles. My dad hunts for a lot of our food, and we have a few chickens, too. He showed me how to hunt and fish, but I'm not very good at hunting. Bet you can fish, though. Sure can. Would you maybe want to go out to the woods with me? You mean on another date? No. Oh. Now? Sure. I have a special place I like. I go there to write. Well, how far is it? A few miles. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, oh, um, that's okay. I just thought maybe you'd like it. I've got a present for you. You do? Yeah. It's out in the woods, though. Oh. But I, I could bring it to you some other time. No, no. You know what? Let's go to your special place, Al. Really? You mean it? Sure. There's something I wanted to talk to you about anyway. I, I think... Uh, I think it'll be better out there. Is it something nice? I think it'll be nice in the end, yes. Okay, uh, let's go. Why won't you talk to me? I, I know you want me to do something, but I, I, I don't know what. I, how, how can I say I'm sorry? How can, how can I help you? What, what, what is it? Why are you looking at me like that? Do you, do you want to be in me? I, I don't think that, oh. Oh, oh you, I, I see, you, you, Want to be here, like, like, like I am. Yes, you, you want me to find someone that you can go into, like, like I went into this one. Like, then we could be together. But, but this one was nearly g gone when I fell in, and I, I only, I think I only went to the twisting place because of what I done. Oh. Oh, yes, you're right. I, I could, I could do it again with, with someone else. Like me. maybe if, if you're here, you'll, you'll just fall in. Oh, Francis. Oh, I miss you so much. I, I, I can't wait to hold you in my arms again. I've, I've got so many new poems for you. I, I wrote one this morning about the sap oozing out of a, a tree and, and it reminded me of you. And I love you so much. Much, Francis.
just about there? Yep. Just around the bend here. Wait till you see it. You're gonna love it, Francis. Sure. Okay. It's just past this tree, and... Uh, <laughs> Ta-da! Oh, wow. It's like an igloo, but with sticks. Yeah. I did a dome because I thought it would stay together longer. Good thinking. You see that spot of dirt over there? The sunken in part? Yeah. I buried a palm there. It's about you. It's your present. Well, one of them, anyway. There's more than one. No, sure. I've written you 35 poems. They're all buried around here. I like burying stuff. We can read them all if you like, but that one's the main one. You want to hear it? Um, is it long? I I've actually got some plates No, no it it'll be real quick. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't rhyme. They don't have to. <laughs> that's, that's what I say, too, sometimes. <clears throat> There's been no one else in my whole life who's ever really talked to me like you do, Francis. Every day I wake up and all I can think about is you. I dream about our life together. I see us alone in a big house on a hill. We tell each other stories and dance to the record player. Oh, uh, no, wait! It's almost done. We tell each other stories and dance to the record player, and we look into each other's eyes and promise to stay sweethearts, even when we get old. We don't need the world. We just need each other. Francis, my sweet... Francis, I'll love you forever. That's, uh, that's it. Did you like it? I wrote it pretty quick. Yes, I, I, I liked it very much. Oh, oh good. Do you want to see inside the dome? No, I, um, I, I have to go soon. But first, I wanted to talk with you about something. Sure. What is it? I really liked your letter. Poem? Yes, poem. I really liked your poem, and I think you're a really swell guy and, and a real catch for some dame. What? But I'm... I'm leaving, Al. Leaving? Uh, to go where? Boston. I've been saving up money for a while. I'm going to try and get a job out there. Move in with my cousin. See what life in the city is like. Well, uh, I see you still. Probably not. But... Why... Why did you get coaxed with me if you're leaving? To tell you. Why would you just not get coaxed with me? I, I don't know. I, I guess I was trying to be nice. N nice? Yeah, nice. I didn't want to hurt your feelings. So, today... Today wasn't really real for you. What? I, I mean... You just wanted to tell me... You were leaving? Yes. But you, you let me buy you a coat? Yes, uh, I can give you a nickel and if you... And you let me take you to my special place to give you a present. So y you wanted a present, but you don't want me. Are you... Do you know that rich girl, Joanna? What? 
Are you making fun of me, Francis? No, I'm not I making don't fun of... understand. I read you my poems. Yes, and, and they were very nice. But you called the important one a letter. And I had to find you. I had to ask Marvin to find you. If you really liked me, you, you would have tried to find me. So, so maybe Joanna or somebody else put you up to it. Al, please. It's not like that. You're making fun of me. And you're using me. You're just like Dad said. You're just like they all are. Come on, brown eyes. Don't call me that. Don't you call okay. me that again. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean just to. Just shut up. You shut up. Just let me talk. Uh, uh. Just stay. Just stay down. Just okay. stay down there. Okay, okay. okay? Just stay there and let let me talk. Whatever you want. Yeah, whatever I want. I want you to say you're making fun of me. What? Admit it. You're making fun of me, aren't you? I'm not. <laughs> Making fun of you. If that's what you want, Al. It's not what I want. It's what you did. I, oh, I can't believe this. I can't believe it. Everything my dad ever said was true. Al, we can work this out, okay? We, we can figure something out. Why don't we go have another Coke and we can talk No! And you think I am going to buy you? Another Coke? You. You whore! What did you do? You're a filthy whore! And you deserve what you're gonna get! That's it! You better run away. You better run away. Francis, you get back here right now! Come back! Leave me alone! Get up this time. Stop! Sit still. Stop moving for just a second here. You listen to me. Francis, all I ever wanted was to love you. That's why I looked for you and I wrote to these poets. Stop moving! Stop moving, Francis! Stop! You're moving? Sit still. Yes. Yeah. No, stop! Stay here. You need to stay here. You need to stay there. And you stay with me. All I ever wanted was you to stay with me. Stay with me. Please stay with me. Francis? Can you hear me? Francis, I... Francis... Francis, what's happening? Hey, you freaks. <laughs> it's Marina on a solo expedition. 
A few days ago, a caller informed us that there is something quite strange going on surrounding a car accident on Danvers Road. So tonight, I am on the scene. I just found the spot of the accident, and so far, everything looks pretty normal. Oh. It's cold as hell, and the sun is just about to go down. I'm gonna turn on my phone's flashlight. Here we go. All right. So there were supposedly footprints that led to the accident, but the cops lost them. Well, there doesn't appear to be anything weird here now, just some twigs spun over grass. A few broken twigs. Okay, so... The tree line leading into the woods is about... 30 feet away from the site of the accident. There would have been... Plenty of time for Drew to exit the vehicle and move into the woods... Before Mason got back with help. Though... Why he would want to do that is beyond me. There's also... What is that? Um, okay. The highway is up on a slight hill, and the woods slope down, and the moon's either full or nearly full, so I can see pretty deeply into the woods, and I, I can't tell how deep in, but I can see a fire. Do you see that? Right there. That's gotta be a fire, right? One sec. Just checking the map on my phone here. Uh, yeah, it looks like there's no roads through the woods in front of me. So if there's not a road, and there's probably not a house. Could be people camping, but it's like 20 degrees and this is definitely not a campground. I'm guessing I could make it there in about 10 minutes. So, what do you think, you testosterone-addled mother lovers? Should I go in? Let's go. Call Ashley. She knows. Oh, it doesn't sound like it went well. She left after she found the divorce papers. Oh, no. And I told her about you. I think she kind of knew already. She's... I haven't seen her like this since her dad. I'm, re I'm really worried, Ash. Where are you now? Driving. I don't know where she went. I was going to look. I, I don't know. Drive around or something? You're probably the last person on earth she wants to see right now. But would you come with me to find her? I know it's asking a lot and I don't hey, want to put that much pressure on you. And I, I... Stop talking. Thank you so much. I'm on my way. Okay, I'll put on some coffee. You should call Tyler. Maybe he knows where she'd go. Oh, right. Yeah, I'll do that now. Hey, Ash? Yeah? I know this is horrible timing, but I want to say something to you. Then say it. I love you. I love you, too. I'll see you soon. Can't wait. Call Tyler Aldean. Tyler, thank God you're there. What are you doing right now? I'm um, waiting. Why? What's up? Have you seen Marina? 
That's who I'm waiting on. She was supposed to be here 20 minutes ago. Okay, listen. Marina and I had a fight. Wait, what? what? What's going it's, on? It's a long story. Tyler, do you have any idea where Marina might go? Um, I'm pretty worried about her, Ty. Uh, yeah, I think I know. If I come get you, will you take me there? Sure. Okay, I'm on my way now. Thank you. Thank you, Ty. Yeah, no problem. I'll see you soon. Maybe 20 feet away from the fire. Can you see this? See that? It's a clearing. Looks like maybe 15 feet in diameter. There's the fire burning in the middle. See those logs? Those look like someone must have put them on very recently, but there's no one. I really hope this thing picked that up. As you can see, there is nothing beside me. Circling the camera now. You can see. You can see that I am completely alone. Except that I'm not. Who's there? Hello? I've got my phone, I'm recording all of this. Whoever you are, just leave me alone. Say, why don't you come get warmed up? Who said that? Over here, by the fire. That guy was not there two minutes ago. Hey, where do you come from? That is quite the question. Would you believe me if I told you that I come from the past? We all come from the past. Uh, oh, yes. I suppose we do. You're Drew, aren't you? D don't think so, but, but then again, I, I suppose I wouldn't really know. Are you hurt? Deeply. Are you hurt? Yeah. Yes. Why don't we both sit here by the fire and t tell each other our, our troubles? All right. Do you mind if I keep recording? To be honest with you, I have no idea what you're talking about, but if it has to do with that Rick tangle thing you keep pointing at me, I suppose it's fine. Drew, I know you're confused. But your family is probably very worried about Aren't you. Aren't you gonna ask about her? What? Who? Francis. You heard her on the way in. I, I, I saw you through the brush. You, you really don't hide yourself that well. I don't understand. What did she sound like? Did she laugh or did she say something? What, what was it? She... She cried. Oh. She must be very sad. Well, not for much longer. What should I call you if you're not Drew? I don't suppose there's any 
harm in you calling me by my name. Al. Al Pleasance. Marina Bishop? Oh, never heard that one before. Very happy to meet you, Marina. Why is she so sad? Oh, s something bad happened to Francis, and she's still awfully blue about it. I think she ought to be happy. She got a new beginning, but she doesn't see it that way. She, she wants more, I, I think. Was. Was Francis killed? Now, why would you ask a thing like that? It's just that name. Francis. There's a local legend around here about a woman named Francis. She was killed in a really violent, terrible way. And the murder was never solved. Never solved, you say? Mm-hmm. And her ghost has supposedly been haunting these woods ever since. And how long ago was this m murder? 1941. Which was? Oh, um, 80 years ago now? You mean to tell me? Wait, hang on a minute. If Francis Cochran died 80 years ago, that would make the year... 2021. 2021? Well, I'll be... How do you like that? I, uh... I didn't tell you her last name. Why, the detective. So you know the legend? Intimately. You don't know what happened to her, do you? I don't like lying, but I don't think you'd believe the truth. Say, do you like poetry? Um, sure. I write poetry. I always thought the best things to write about in the whole world were the ones that made you the saddest. Because when you write about one of those things, they don't hurt as much anymore. What makes you sad, Marina? My dad. He disappeared a year ago. Maybe you're lucky. What? You never know what a man will become. Maybe maybe it's a kindness that you'll never have to find out. It isn't. What about you? I'd write about her. Who? The woman standing behind you. Don't don't turn. You can feel her there, can't you? Tell the truth. Francis. She comes to this spot every night at this time, but it's it's hard to tell. A lot's changed, but I, I, I think this is where it happened. Now, I'm going to tell you some things that you're not going to want to hear. The spirit behind you is Francis Cochran. She's been haunting this land for 80 years now, apparently. I believe she's been waiting for me. Why has she been waiting for you? Because I'm the one that killed her. And I'm the one who can give her life again. Now, this next part won't be easy, Marina. But I need you to trust me. Do you think you could do that? I don't know. Maybe. That's, that's good enough for now. I, I believe that Francis wants to be like me. Like you, how? In a body. Okay. There's a place between where we came from and here. It's a strange, spinning, twisting place, like standing in the middle of a cyclone. But you can see and hear everything. Everything that ever happened and or will happen. Now, I've been thinking it over since I arrived, and I, I think I figured it out. Figured what out? 
Well, there must be something special about this land. When you give it a life, it takes you to the twisting place, and it drops you someplace else in a, another time. I, I don't know why it put me here, but it feels like there are rules somehow. Think, think about what you could do with that, if you could figure out the rules, I mean. I don't understand. You could find your father. You might even be able to join him wherever he went. You just need to listen hard and be on the lookout. I, I haven't spoken with Francis, but it seems to me that she probably went through the twisting place, too. So you think... You think that even if someone's dead, this twisting place can find them? Oh, sure. M more than that, I'd say. It seems it can give them life again, too. Well, look at me, for example. According to you, I'm about a hundred years old. Do I look a hundred years old? No. Well, there you go. I, I don't know how it works, but you seem to me like a girl that doesn't much like where she is. I used to be that way, too. How would I enter the twisting place? Oh, well, that's where I, things get a bit tricky, I'm afraid. What do you mean? The way I see it, there's a few things the three of us each want. Francis wants to come back, but she needs a body to do it. A, a vessel like this Drew was to me. And, of course, I want Francis to come back, too. And you want to find your dad. Now, now there's no easy way to say this, Marina. In order for each of those things to happen, in order for all of us to be happy, you're going to have to die. Are you joking? I'm afraid not. I've, I've got a piece of sharpened metal here. When I came to, it was in my shoulder. I, I could make it very quick for you. My, my dad taught me how on deer. I'm, I'm sure it's similar. Or, or if you prefer, you could do it yourself. Are you sure that I would be able to see my dad again? No but I am sure you'd have a much better chance this way. Okay. I'm coming over. I think I'd like to do it myself. Of course. If I were you, I, I... Is that her car up there? Yeah. Doesn't look like she's in it. Any idea where she might be? Something... Something isn't right. What? I, I don't know. I... I feel so strange. Like... Like... Something is open that shouldn't be open. I... I don't know how to explain it. Do you want to... In God's name, was that? Wait. Look there. A fire. Let's go. You all right to come along, Ash? Yeah. Uh, I'll be fine. Let, let's go. I think we should probably hurry up now. Are you ready? You'll stay here after I'm gone, right? Seems that way. Could you... Could you find my mom? Her name's Patricia. She teaches history at Salem State. I'd like you to tell her something. What? Tell her... 
tell her I couldn't find my way out. And that I'm sorry. All right. I'll, I'll do it first thing. Here, take the medal. Hold on. Do you hear that? Francis! I can hear you, Francis! P please, talk to me! Marina! Hi! What are you doing? Stay back! Don't, don't come any closer! Marina, who is that? Mom? Ashley? What are you all doing here? It's not important right now, Marina. Who is this? I know this is insane, but he says his name is Al Pleasance. Eighty years ago, he killed a young woman on this spot. When he did that, some kind of energy opened up. He calls it the Twisting Place. It took him into a vortex or something, and it dropped him into Drew's body. Right after the car accident. Right after he died. What the hell are you talking about? I think it's true, Ty. The way he talks, it's... I don't know exactly, but I think I believe Pat. him. Pat, I, I... I feel so dizzy. Ashley! Ash! She passed out. Marina, we have to go. Oh, well, I'm afraid you can't do that. Not all of you, anyway. What are you- He wants me to stay. If I do what he wants, he thinks I can go into the twisting place. That I can see Dad again. And, and why is he holding that piece of metal? What, that got something to do with what he wants? If there's a chance, Ty, even a small one, I have to take it. I can't stay here without- Why not? You've got me! You've got your mom. You've got a life here. Don't disregard it on some chance that there might be something better in a fucking cosmic vortex. Are you insane? Tyler. Enough, Marina. I can handle a lot because I just can. But this... Marina, how much of this is real? What? How much of this is real? The missing your dad, the crippling paralysis. I've been with you almost every single day since he left. And I've seen you, Marina. I don't think it's as real as you let on. Of course it's real. I think you're scared. And I think all this is a convenient excuse for you not to do the hard things that need doing. And if you go this far, Marina, if you willingly throw away everything for a shot at something that's probably not even possible, then you're a fool. And if you do this to me, to your mom, to everyone who loves you, then that's who you become forever. The person who did that terrible thing, it would eclipse everything else about you. And all of the incredible things that you are would be lost to that one mistake. I... Marina. Marina, look at me. Really look. I know you don't want this. Do you? Ty. Marina. No. No. Okay. It's okay. We'll figure it out together. Come on, let's get out of here. She can't leave. Oh. Marina! No! Get them out of here! Marina, ah. come here! Oh. Can you walk? I think so. Keep pressure on it. Ashley. Get Ashley. Down. Come on, honey. Can you hear me? You need to wake up now. Oh. Come on, Ashley. Oh. Look! Oh my god. It's her! It's Frances Cochran! What is she doing? She's moving to Ashley. My god, she's. <coughs> Stay down, you! M Marina! Brown eyes. Frances? The one and only. I'm coming for a kiss, brown eyes. Oh, Francis, is it really you? Tyler? Oh, Tyler, Francis. can you move? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Francis. Uh. All right, time to go. What about Ashley? I don't know, but you, you need help. Right now. <gasps> oh, it is you. I, I, I've missed you so much. Now, now what was that about a, a kiss? Got it right here. Wasn't that nice? It sure was. Hey, Al? Yes? You deserve what you're gonna get. 
There now. It's over. It's finally over. What is that? Come on, we've got to go! Back at the special place. So is that... Francis? No, Francis! I know I was gonna fix this and... Wake up, Francis, please. Please, Francis, wake up. I'm so sorry. No. Francis. <laughs> I'll make it right, Francis. I'll make it right. Morning. Hi. Smells nice. Glad you think so. <clears throat> How are the stitches? Holding up so far. Thanks for asking. Heard anything? No. I asked Ty if he wouldn't mind going back out there this morning and looking around a bit. Maybe he'll find something. Yeah, maybe. I'm so sorry, Mom. Thank you. I don't... I'm really worried about her. I know, Mom. <laughs> it's okay. I'm here. Oh, I hope you don't mind. I just told Ty to come by when he was done. I thought we should all talk. <clears throat> of course. Hi. Hey. How are the stitches? Itchy. Seems like he missed all the important bits. Not by much, though. You want some breakfast? Sure. Well, this is weird. <laughs> yeah. More than weird. It's only going to get weirder. My phone! I found it out there. Completely dead. Oh, let me plug it in real quick. Did you find anything else? Not really. Bent tree branches, an old fire, the, the metal thing. Did you get it? I, uh, I kicked some dirt and leaves over it. I didn't think that you'd want to see it again. I don't. And Ashley? Nothing. I'm sorry. I did find this before I went out there, though. In memoriam, a funeral service will be held for Albert Pleasance of Swampscott at 2 p.m. today. Albert was the son of Frank and Cecily Pleasance, who herself passed two years ago. Albert left this earth on the evening of July 20th. You recognize the date? What about it? That's the same day the anonymous caller dialed into the radio station after Francis's mom went on the air. Oh, right. He told them where to find the body. Then hung up. I found the coroner's report, too. And? I think Al called them, then hung up and took his own life. 
I don't think my phone stopped recording. What? I went to the woods in the first place to record for the podcast. I was filming when Al or Drew or whatever found me. I dropped the phone, but it would have just recorded until it ran out of battery, right? Maybe, yeah. It's here. How long is it? 45 minutes. Should I play it? Maybe, maybe skip to the end? After we left. Oh yeah, good idea. What? I don't understand. It sounds like Ashley's alive. Was there more? About ten minutes. I guess that's when the phone died. I don't think we'll hear anything else. Her voice. I think I might go upstairs and lie down for a while. Would that be all right with you two? Of course. Do you want me to help, Mom? No. I'm all right. You finished your breakfast. Thank you, Ty. Sure thing. I guess I should thank you, too. Probably. I did uh, save your life and all that. I don't know if I'd go that far. You just won't let me have a single thing, hey, will you? Ty. Yeah? I need to tell you some things. Is it okay if I just talk and you just listen for a minute? Oh, sure. I've been thinking, and so I'm just going to say it. I know that you've had feelings for me for a long time, and we've never really talked about it. And I'm sorry for that. I've been putting it off because... Because I was afraid if I told you the truth, I'd lose you. And I don't want that. But... But... I don't feel the way you feel, Ty. I wish I did. But I don't. I, um... Yeah, I think I maybe knew that. You did? I think, um, I think I'm going to need some time away from us. Like you said, I've, I've felt this way for a long time. And, um, well, if all the cards are on the table here, I have never felt it toward anyone else. And I don't really know how to be your friend without it. But I, um, I think I need to, I don't know, put up some walls or something. Okay. Yeah, I understand. What do we do now? Uh, I think I'm 
Maybe I should go. Oh. Okay. I get it. Let me... walk you out. Well, be seeing you, I guess. Yeah. Hey. Yeah? I love you, Ty. I hope after you do what you need to do, you come back. I hope so, too. Okay. 